Hey, not Script Kitty here. Today I wanted to show you a project I made a few months ago. And so basically I was bored one day in Spanish class and my teacher was using her projector to show us a PowerPoint. And I thought like, hmm, what if I could control it while she was showing us the PowerPoint and then like mess with her while she was trying to use it. It was going to be pretty cool. And I looked on eBay and the projector remotes that she had were around $20. So I decided I'd rather build it myself because it would be cooler. So then, after several months of making, I made this, which I like to call the IR hijacker. Basically, it receives infrared here and puts it out there. And I can control that with a push of a button here. So first, I just wanted to show the hijacker working on a normal TV. And uh, so what you want to do is just turn it on and the sensor is really good so it can pick up infrared signals bouncing off of walls, the couch, ceiling, this black piece right here. So I'm just going to leave it standing upright and when it sniffs or when it receives the signal it'll turn blue. So I'm going to press the menu button on here right there and we'll see what happens. So this menu pops up. And normally you don't have to press it multiple times, but I just want to see, I just want you to see that it's receiving it. See how it's blinking blue right there? So now that means this has the code. And all I have to do is press this button right here and watch. Menu goes away. So it definitely works on TVs, but that's to say it's no different than this which can do the same exact thing. Click the link to see what I'm talking about. So now, I'm going to show you this on a non-TV device. So let's go to my sound box down here, which I already turned on. And what I'm going to do is take this remote and change the volume with it. And let me put the hijacker down here. And Let's see, I'll just minus the volume one. So 43, 45, 46, negative 48. Okay, so this thing just blanked a whole bunch. I know it's got the signal, so watch. Let me just. Okay, there it goes. Needed to back up some. So, every time I press it, it goes down one. Let me get that in focus. So, yeah. This definitely works. One thing to remember is every time you turn it off, sometimes I hit it by accident, it loses the code that it already had stored. So now when I turn it on again, there's no code to send out. It doesn't work. So that's one thing to remember. Now I want to show you the autonomous feature of the hijacker, which you turn it on, you press and hold the button for five seconds, and then it should blink, it should flash. There it goes. Actually, it'll just stay solid. Okay, now you enter the interval in five seconds, so I hit once for just five seconds and then you hold and press for another five seconds to exit the interval and then it'll blank and now it's armed so whenever it receives something it'll blank blue and it'll send that code out every five seconds so here's the minus button so now every five seconds without me pressing the button it'll send it now this isn't receiving it because it's gone too far, so I'll just turn that up some. Okay. There it goes. 61. 62. So, autonomous. And the reason I added that is because I wanted to turn on the autonomous feature 
stick it in the back of my classroom and set the time to like 10 minutes or something. That way when the teacher turns on a projector, every 10 minutes it'll turn it back off and I won't be holding this suspicious red glowing box to give me away. And yeah. So now let me show you what I did to make it. So these are all the pieces I used when making this. First off, I started out with an A-Tiny 85, which is a really, really cool microchip, but it just couldn't get the job done. I had a tough time installing infrared libraries onto it, and after many hours of practicing and tweaking, I just gave up, and I found one of these. Now this, this is really cool. This is an Arduino Pro Micro. This is the 5 volt version. Basically, they took the big Arduino microchip and shrunk it down to this. Huge size difference. It's still pretty powerful. Not as much memory, but it can fit in small things like this. So, um, at first I bought one of these and I didn't know what I was doing. I hooked up the power wrong. I shorted the board. Smoke was everywhere. It stuck pretty bad, so I bought another one. And actually, the next time I bought the 3.3 volt version, notice how it's white. This is red. Also, you can pick these up for about $3 on eBay if you're willing to wait a month. Or on Amazon, you can get them for around, I think, 6 or $7. And if you have Prime, two days. So I waited a month. And in total, I bought like five of them. Um, on the fifth one, I actually got this thing to work. So what I did was took one of these and I bought the 3.3 version specifically so I could use with a 3.7 lithium ion volt. I got about five of these for a few bucks on eBay. I'll put that in the description. So basically I could power this board with a small battery which is you can see both of those in there. And the board is back here. It's kind of hard to tell with the glare. But it's back there. So once I had that, I used someone else's code, I modified it, I added the autonomy in there. I'll post that in the description too. And um, yeah, I used already created Arduino infrared library, so it was really easy to just decode input from here and send it out here with the push of a button. So all I needed to do that was an infrared LED right there. Um, one of these sensors, I don't have another one on hand, but I used a sensor similar to this. This is just a module that you can plug into a breadboard. Yeah, I ran into a lot of problems with the brightness of this, and I didn't fix it until the very end. So I added a transistor to brighten it. I learned a whole lot of new things during this project. But I added a transistor and took this power source and amplified whatever signal the board was putting out and it made this incredibly bright so now it can bounce off walls and still hit the TV it works great so once I had these two and these basically all I did was hook up a couple things to a couple pins I added this charging circuit in the corner here for power and I added a switch and that was it and actually, funny thing, when I finished the first one of these, I made two. I was trying to make this hole bigger because I switched from a 3mm infrared LED to a 5, which it is now. And I was drilling the hole, and all of these pieces were already hot glued in. So when I stuck the drill down, it jumped when I didn't even realize it. And it ripped out all of these circuits and all of the glue and... It took me another, I don't know, month, maybe not a month, but a few weeks to fix it all. And that's when I made all the changes. I made this brighter, I made it bigger. And basically I fixed everything. It works perfectly now, autonomous. I'll put the code in the description, links to all these parts, diagrams, everything in the description. Thanks for watching. Share, subscribe, check it out.